Hi, I'm Dr. Nishant Yagnik. I'm faculty for neurosurgery for Maru. So, emergency neurosurgery, the most important thing you have to know is GCS. Alright, so GCS has been focused upon in almost every paper that I have seen. I'm going to describe the GCS scale in the next slide. Uh, one important question that was actually asked uh, in I think previous or the uh, neat previous to that was that the revised trauma score and the revised trauma score is an example of a scoring system for trauma patients which includes three factors. It's the Glasgow coma scale, the systolic blood pressure and the respiratory rate. This is right out of your general surgery textbooks and a previously asked question. So these are the three factors that have been concentrated upon in revised trauma score and such a perfect question. They'll give you one factor that is not one of these three and they'll ask you all except type of question. Then in flow assessment flow charts, the second important MCQ which is from a previous paper is that ABC airway breathing circulation is done then neurological assessment is done but GCS and extremity movements are part of the primary survey not the secondary survey. So that is another importance of GCS. GCS has to be known by every general surgeon as a part as part of the primary survey. So ABC is done uh, and then in the primary survey you do GCS with uh, extremity movements. In the secondary survey you can do scans, you can do the other, other uh, parts of the survey itself. Now coming to GCS, we will quickly cover what GCS is. You need to know this. You have, there is no excuse. Uh, you need to do this by heart. So there are three important points in GCS. The first is uh, eye opening response. The second is verbal response. And the third is motor response. Now very quickly, eye opening response is simple to understand. I open, so the GCS scale, the most commonly asked question actually, the lowest GCS scale is three. A patient who is brain dead has a GCS score of three not zero. So that is the one, one most important, most commonly asked point. The highest GCS score is 15. So GCS goes from 3 to 15, not 0 to 15. So the first one point if for eye opening, the first point is given to no eye opening. So if there is no response, it's actually score 1. Same thing. If there is no verbal response, it is score is 1. If there is no motor response, the score is 1. Hence, the total GCS is 3. Even if the patient is intubated or tracheostomized, it is called VT. We write it as a tracheostomized or on, on tube ver verbal response and the score is given is 1. So, uh, coming ahead of that, the first uh, number 1 is no response. The second is when you give pain to the patient or when you stimulate the patient and if the patient opens his eyes. If you slap the face a little bit and the eyes are open, uh, that is number two that is given to a point of scoring of two. If you tell a person to open their eyes, if you if you call a name, if they call out their name, uh, Nishant, open your eyes and the patient opens the eyes, that's given a score of three. And a patient who is lying down with eyes open completely, spontaneously, that is has been given a score of four. That is the highest score because for example, right now I'm sitting in front of you with my eyes open. My eye opening score is four. Coming to verbal response, also easier to understand. First, I, I told you one point is given if there's absolutely no response. It's like giving a consolation prize. The second is if the patient is making incomprehensible sounds. What this means is a uh, patient will come to you in the emergency and it will be like, uh, 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 so if you pinch the patient, if you put in a needle into the patient, if you scream at the patient, it doesn't matter. All the patient will do is make sounds, uh, uh, things like that. And if the patient starts using inappropriate words, so uh, if, for example, I come into the emergency and you as the neurosurgeon of the future will ask me, uh, Nishant, uh, how did you get injured? And I say, uh, pain, pain, uh, uh, car. So this is inappropriate words that have nothing to do with what I've asked. If you ask me, uh, where is the pain? I will say something like uh, duty uh, or uh, doctor. So this is not relevant to what I'm asking. So there are inappropriate words. The further response to this can be a complete sentence. For example, Nishant, what is, uh, where is it paining? I I have had a concussion. Uh, I don't know if, if I am good. So this is a complete sentence. It has coherence. So that has given a score of four. But if I am not oriented to your questions, so I might ask, I might even say that, you know, uh, you ask me, where is the pain? And I'll say the pain is in the leg. But when you ask me, uh, 
where are you right now? And I say, I am in Bangalore. So that means that I am not oriented to time, place and person and therefore I am confused and this has been given a response of four. So complete sentences without orientation to time, place and person has been given a score of four. And finally, if I am the way I'm talking to you now, I have complete sentences. They are coherent to what I'm talking and I am, uh, you know, I am I know where I am. So this I'm oriented to time, place and person. And therefore that normal score is five. You and me have a score of five. So no response, uh, oh, incomprehensible uh, sounds, uh, this, that, inappropriate words. Uh, I am Nishant, but without, you know, orientation to time, place and person is complete sentences without orientation, disoriented or confused state and normal response like I'm giving a score of five. Now coming to the more, the more difficult one is motor response. Now for your basic, just understand, just you know, remember the score by heart. No response, obviously, consolation prize given a score of one. Abnormal extension, also called decerebrate posture. Abnormal flexion is three, also called decorticate posture. This is the one in which most people, most questions are asked and most people get confused because they forget what, which one was which. The question will be decorticate is given a score of or do decerebrate is given a score of. The way I remember this, even now, sometimes I can get confused because we don't use these words on regular practical, uh, in regular practice. See, there is, this is the cerebrum or the entire brain. So this entire brain is called the cerebrum, including the brain stem. This is the cortex of the brain, just like the cortex of a kidney or any other structure. So remember, the entire brain is, injury to the entire brain is more severe than injury to just the cortex of the brain while the brainstem is normal. So the more severe injury, which has the lower score, will be decerebrate. Complete cerebrum is gone. And the less severe injury with a higher score, obviously, given more points because it's better, is decorticate because only the cortical part is injured. That is not actually true, the, that just the cortical part is injured. Decorticate injury and decerebrate injury both occur because of brainstem related injuries. It's a bit more complex with an injury between two nuclear complexes and all, forget about all that. But this is a simple way of remembering that decerebrate, entire cerebrum is injured. So it's worse than hence score of two and decorticate only the cortical part is injured. So a score of three. And this is, this causes abnormal extension response and this causes abnormal flexion response. So then we come to a score of four, which is when a patient withdraws from pain. The actual response to this, the actual answer to this is not flexion to withdrawal from pain. This figure is wrong. Many figures are wrong. The standard way of saying this is a uh, uh, local uh, below, no above shoulder localization of pain. So that is the newest terminology and the most accurate. The reason is, if you pinch someone in the ear, how are they going to withdraw from pain? Max, they'll do this. And sometimes patients don't even do that. So a normal flexion response, not localizing above shoulder is a given a score of four. What that means is, if I pinch a patient with a score of four on the chest, they will not go towards the chest. There's no localizing, but they will move their hand in a normal way. Whereas in score two and three, abnormal responses are happening. In a score of two, if I pinch the legs, the hands will become straight. They will not go toward the leg to take my response away. If I, if, if I pinch a, uh, a patient with M3, motor three response, the hands will always become flexed like this. If I pinch in the ear, pinch in the uh, in the groin, pinch in the uh, shoulder, pinch in the legs, either ways, they'll always flex like this. But an M4 patient for the four response will start flexing normally. It's not an abnormal response. They just won't be able to localize pain. So non-localizing normal flexion uh, on pain is called an M4 response. Whereas a, a localization to pain, and to, to be more detailed and above shoulder localization. Why above shoulder? Because spinal reflexes can occur when you pinch in the uh, spinal areas. So they can automatically go to that part as a, as a spinal reflex. Uh, we're actually checking the brain. So the cranial nerves are the ones that actually innervate the face. So, uh, abnorm, uh, so an above shoulder localization to pain is considered, uh, uh, you know, a grade five response while you and I obey commands. Uh, especially for wives. So we are, uh, you know, a grade five, well, grade six, we are given a motor score of six. So uh, this 
GCS score can be remembered. I've given you some memory tags to help you. Of all the charts and anything that you need to remember, please remember this one. There are other, uh, there are other charts I've given other tables, but this is the most important one. Please remember GCS. So the highest score is 15. The lowest score is three. You give, give a, a eye opening response up to four, a verbal response up to five, a motor response up to six. And I've, I've described what these responses are and hopefully you can remember them.